Hey, how's it going? Um, before I get into uh, the actual proof of concept demo, um, the first one that I made, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the origin of how the game came about and why I'm making it. Um, it really goes back to um, my childhood, the games I played in the early 90s on the Super Nintendo, which, you know, looking back, seems to be looked at more favorably, maybe, than any other console. Because uh, there were so many great, great games with a lot of innovative gameplay. It was bright, it was colorful, and there was a lot of depth to it. Uh, three games in particular that I really liked, but I didn't get enough of. And when I say I didn't get enough of them, I mean to say that there was stuff you could do in that game that I wanted to do more of. And it never happened. Um, the first one, which is kind of a rare one because it's import only, is Ghost Sweeper Mikami. It's a game I only know about because I was in the anime club in college and I knew about the anime. And, well, it didn't particularly give me anything original, I knew about it. And because of that, I was curious enough to play the game. And it was pretty solid. It was uh, definitely a, a visual feast with very solid gameplay. Um, but my favorite part was these very specific shrine shelves that you could latch onto and then swing yourself up on top of. Um, you could only do it on these very specific ledges. But when you did do it, it, it felt very natural, you know, once you got the control down. And you would attack, you would kick as you were swinging up. And, you know, that should have been more useful, but it wasn't. So, I was left wanting more. Um, second one definitely is uh, Super Castlevania IV which might be my favorite Castlevania game of all time, if not for Symphony of the Night, uh, which a lot of subsequent games just kind of copied. Um, that original Symphony of the Night was an amazing experience. Uh, but I'll get into that later. As for Super Castlevania IV, the control was just amazing. You really felt like you're a badass, you know? I mean, it was certainly easier than the first three, but, I mean, you didn't care, because you were, you were constantly being entertained. In the first three, you were constantly being challenged. And it's kind of subjective as to whether that means you were constantly being entertained. Super Castlevania IV, you were constantly being entertained. You were jumping around on crazy platforms, you were fighting all kinds of monsters, there were lots of different environments with these new visual tricks that were capable in the new hardware. And of course you could whip in all eight directions. You really felt like you could do anything. You felt empowered. And that's a really great thing for a video game to do. And they never did that again in any of the subsequent Castlevania games. So it it's no surprise there. I wanted more swinging. Particularly swinging on those specific um, uh, circlets. There are parts where you can swing like Indiana Jones and the mechanics were great but they didn't do anything with it. I mean there's a platform here and you need to swing and you know you need to swing because there's a ring there and then you swing. Um, it's not an attack. It doesn't come up in any boss fights. There's really no puzzle element to it. It's just kind of a thing that's in there. And I was so disappointed that that there wasn't more to it. I felt like, you know, maybe there's a secret level, you know, that I didn't, didn't know about. Maybe there's a, a branching path or something. But no, it was all very straightforward. And it just didn't do anything with swinging. You know, I was a kid. I wanted to swing like Indiana Jones. I wanted it to be really cool. Um, the third game is definitely Super Metroid. 
and you already know I like Symphony of the Night. So you think, I love these big exploring games which have a lot of, I call them Metroid points, which are points that you can't get into because you don't have the right power up. Um, but we'll be talking a lot about that in the upcoming weeks. But I didn't like Super Metroid for the same reason that you probably love Super Metroid. Super Metroid had great controls, had a lot of color, has a lot of discovery to it, there's a lot of cool things you can do, a lot of great boss battles. Okay, a couple great boss battles. But it told a story through gameplay. It's it's not a very deep story, it's not a very complex story, but they told it through gameplay. Simply by having objects in the room, objects in the background, um, of course, the music, the ambiance, uh, the way the levels were constructed, it told a story. And just the idea of, you know, the reversals, you know, the character, and there's really only two characters, you know who they are, but it could tell a story just by you playing the game. It didn't need to stop, it didn't need to have text on the screen, it didn't need to show you a cutscene, or even post any um, images up on the screen. Now, with the exception, of course, the recap at the beginning of the game. It did it all without words, and it did it interactively. And I think that's what games should be, you know? And, you know, there are some, some examples like Portal that has, you know, a great story to it, um, but it does it with one-sided dialogue, and to an extent, you know, the backgrounds, and the art and everything, but... I said to myself, and I had long since dreamed of being a game designer when I was playing my Super Nintendo, I said to myself, I'm going to make a game that tells all of its story just through gameplay. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of story it is, there's going to be a story there. And you're going to play the story, you're not going to be told the story. And that's why I wanted to make Maya Breaker. And uh, that's what brings me here today. So. Hope you have a good time and stay tuned for the rest of the vlog.